This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your perfect partner to easily make websites. Oh god. Oh. Hey guys! So did you know that some Sanrio characters are inspired by food or straight up made out of food? They're like made of eggs, burgers and fries or even salmon. One of my favorites, however, is made out of something else. Mm. Hey, wait! Huh? What? How can you have any pudding without making pom pom pudding first? Right, y'all voted for the next Sanrio doll and Pom Pom Purin won, so let's make Pom Pom Purin the pudding dog. Okay, so I mixed this really nice dark skin tone and let's pour it in and start the print. So as I'm pouring in the resin, I can't but think that it looks like forbidden caramel sauce for pudding. Did someone say pudding? I hope no one discovered my super secret pudding lover website that I made with Squarespace. With clean and professional portfolio gallery designs, you can easily create your very own website. You can even make password protected areas for very special pudding lover VIPs. Thanks to image blocks, my pudding images will always be automatically scaled in size. This way they look always perfect no matter how I'm placing them in my content. I mean, they are perfect to begin with, but you get what I'm telling. It looks so delicious. And once you're ready to sell your pudding merchandise, you can set up an online store in a heartbeat. Whether you have physical or digital goods, Squarespace has the perfect tools to start selling your art online. You can even connect your social media accounts by just changing the links and icons and even add your Instagram feed to the website. So if this sounds right up your alley, check out squarespace.com for a free try. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel and get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website by using the code moonlightjewel. That's squarespace.com slash moonlightjewel, code moonlightjewel. Thank you Squarespace again for sponsoring this video. And with that being said, let's get back into making pom pom pudding. All right, now that the resin is poured in, I can close the lid of the printer, turn it on and start the printing process. This was one of a few because a couple pieces really like to fail sometimes for reasons unknown to mankind. <laughs> also, for some reason, I seem to make the weirdest sounds while working. Ew! That little piece failed like twice before. <laughs> the lower torsi, I wrote torsi! <laughs> The lower torso piece was the last one missing for the doll. You can see Blue Pixie was so sweet and sculpted Purin a little chubbier than the other dolls because... <coughs> bless you! Because Pom Pom Purin is the cutest little chub. Alright, last piece is cured, so let me show you all the pieces of the doll. I'm so in love with this little one already and my time has come to assemble him now. For stringing BJDs, it's easiest for me to first string the arms. Thanks to editing magic, this is quickly done. And now let's string the rest just as fast. And there he is. Oh my god, he's already stealing my heart. What a darling. I will add his feet later on because Blue made some pretty shoes for him again. And here's a little showcase of him before the customizing process. It's always so nice for me to compare the before and after when rewatching the process. All right, let's start with his outfit. Purin's colors are brown and yellow, so I wanted to stay true to the color scheme and will first sew some yellow elastic cuffs to the cream colored sleeves. I just stretch them while sewing to make them gather. After sewing both cuffs, I then take the bodice of the sweatshirt and sew both sleeves on finished sides in. And then I am taking another cuff, which is really just a folded fabric stripe, and sew it onto the neckline finished sides in as well starts to look like a shirt. Now I can already close the sleeve and side seams of the shirt like this and hem them. And before closing the back seam, I am adding another cuff this time to the bottom of the shirt and sew it on while stretching it as well. To really showcase that this is Purin's shirt, I wanted to make a little button, so I prepared the design on my PC, printed it on cardboard and will now fill my half sphere mold with a bit of UV resin, sprinkle some glitter on top of it and then add the design with the good side facing down to the resin and cure it for 2 minutes. Once it was hard, I can demold it and have a cute little button design. There's a bit of excess resin, I just sand it off off cam. And then it's time to add the button to the shirt and I'm just gluing it on with my trusty uh -huh. glue. Now I just have to add a closure and the first clothing piece for Purin is done. It looks so cozy and has such a pretty color. I want it for myself though. 
The next piece of clothing I wanted to give Pom Pomperin was some cute white cuffed brown pants, so I will first be gluing around the pocket opening with my Uhu glue stick. Then I can lay the pleats that I marked with scissor snaps and place the pocket back underneath, hemming them in place with a couple stitches here and here. After doing so I take the pleat marking on the bottom of the pants and also hem those in place with a couple stitches. Now I can finally sew the front seam of the pants finished sides in. I also sewed the pleats on the back piece for the pants and can now sew them on the front of the pants finished sides in along the side seam. It finally starts to look like pants. Before closing them I prepped the waistband like this and will now sew it to the top of the pants along the waistline and cleaned up the bottom seams of the legs as well. I also decided to add some belt loops because it always makes pants look more realistic, so I take these tiny fray checked stripes and sew them on top of the pants. Great! Now it's finally time to sew the back seam of the pants together, finished sides in, leaving a gap though for a closure. And after that I can sew the inner side and crutch seam from one leg all the way to the other one. And with that we have some super cute pleated pants and I think they fit perfectly for Pom Pom Brin. I had this idea of making a doll backpack for Purin, so here you can see me prepping some tiny pockets for it. I glue around the upper and lower seam allowance first and then take these teeny tiny magnets to make a closure. I super glue one magnet to the inside of the pocket and one maggot, 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 <laughs> and one magnet to the inside of the pocket flap. Now I will cover the pocket flap with some iron-on interfacing and glue a tiny fabric piece on top of the magnet inside the pocket. When that was done, I can glue around the side seam allowances of the pocket as well. Okay, time to test if it works. Yay, it does! Oh my god, that's so cool! I then proceeded to make a second small pocket the same way and one bigger front pocket that closes with two magnets. Then I take the bodice piece for the backpack that I reinforced with a thick iron-on interfacing. I marked where I wanted to place the pockets and then first take the pocket flap and sew them on like this, good sides facing each other. I do that with all the pocket flaps and end up with something like this. Then I take the bodice of the pockets, place them onto the backpack like this and sew them on along the side and bottom seams. Now I can close the little pockets before finally sewing the bodice together. I fold the side seams of the bodice together like this and will sew all four seams finished sides in. Looking good so far! To reinforce the bottom of the backpack I take this cardboard piece, spread some uwu glue on it and glue it to the inside of the backpack. This gives it a little bit more shape. And then I can glue around the upper seam allowance of the backpack as well. When everything was cleaned up, I took another cardboard piece and covered it with some pleather and will now glue it onto the bottom of the backpack from the outside. I then also prepared a pleather stripe by gluing around the edges like this and will be gluing it onto the backpack like this, covering up any gaps. This was super tedious, but it makes the backpack look even better. Now it's time to attach a little closure to the backpack. I use this tiny snap button and first sew on the bottom piece of it by hand onto the backpack. And then it's time to add the top part by marking it on the big pocket flap first and then sewing the top part of the button onto a tiny piece of pleather so that there will be no visible stitches on the flap. I just glue it in place and then I can glue the big pocket flap onto the backpack like this. When it dried I could close it and it looks awesome. Now for the details. I prepared two tiny straps by threading a golden mini ring through them. I will be gluing those straps to the backpack like this using my Uhu glue. I then made a double faced mini stripe for a handle and glue it onto the back of the backpack creating a little loop. And for the actual straps I just take two pleather stripes and glue them on top of the backpack first before creating the strap loop by fixating them on the bottom as well. Okay guys, almost done. I just add some tiny golden half beads on top of the pocket flaps with some PVA glue. In retrospect, super glue would have been better, I think though. <laughs> 
And with that we have a crazy cute backpack. I also added a tassel to the big front pocket with some pleather stripe leftovers. I'm so proud how it turned out and that also all the pockets actually work. I'm thinking of releasing an ebook with doll accessories, so stay tuned for that. Let's give Purin his ears. I printed Cinemarol's headphones in yellow for that, but we'll paint them a little bit more pastel yellow because they're a bit too vibrant. While they were drying, I cut out a circle and a circle ring from a dark brown fabric and reinforced the ring with some interfacing. Then I'm taking a pleather stripe and will glue it around the inner circle of the circle ring like this to clean up the opening. This was super finicky, but I really wanted a clean look, even though it won't be visible in the end anyways. <laughs> After this was done, I realized that I drew the seam lines on the wrong fabric side. I'm an idiot, I should have drawn it on the other side. Oh well. I'm placing the pieces like this and will now sew around the big circle. After turning it inside out, it looks like a Barrett already. For the little stalk, spike, I have no idea how it's called, I use a fray checked fabric stripe and fold it like this before attaching it to the barret with a needle and a thread. And to be able to attach the barret to the headphones, I will be gluing a satin ribbon to the inside of the barret like this and when that was dry I could lace it around the headphones like this. And with that we have his super cute ears with the signature barret and it just looks so adorable. I also added a little gold paint on the side of the headphones as well. Time for shoes! Blue Pixie sculpted these beautiful boots for the doll and I'm just going to be painting them with some reddish brown paint first. Once they were dry I can then add the details with some black and paint the sole and the details on top of the shoes. And that was really it, because Blue sculpted these so perfectly, they don't need more to them. I'm super super impressed with the details and I love the shoes. Okay, let's finally give Purin some hair. I made this little wig cap for him already and want to try something new today. I want to give him an undercut and for that I want to flock the back of his head. What the dog doing? So I'm taking my PVA glue and spread it everywhere I want to add the flocking. And then I take the flocking and try to sprinkle it on, which was not that easy because it tends to clump a lot. I then let the whole first layer dry and will then add a second layer for more opacity since flocking is not that opaque. I figured dabbing on the flocking worked better. <laughs> this looks a bit like the monk stage of wig making now, but I'm happy so far. I already prepped some pastel yellow yarn wefts of cam and then taking my hot glue gun start gluing them onto the wig. I will just be adding layer by layer but already cut each layer to the right length immediately because it will just make the hair styling a little easier. So I just add wefts and cut over and over again basically. To thin out the ends of the hair a little bit I use my X-Acto knife. And to style it I use a brush and some hair gel. Then I just keep going, gluing, wefts, cutting, styling, until I reach the top of the head. Now I just have to add the parting wefts by gluing them on and then flipping them into the opposite direction to hide the glued part of the weft. And after I added the second parting weft, the wig is done and I'm so happy I could make this haircut work. Short haircuts are a lot harder than longer ones. <laughs> Okay, now it's just the face missing. After spraying him with some Mr. Super Clear, I take my fluffy brush and add some blushing to his face first. It might look very intense in color, but it will fade a little when spraying him again later on. After blushing his cheeks, I then start sketching out the eye lines with a brown pencil. I wanted to give him a friendly look, so I tried to match the eye lines to that. I slowly build them up and when I'm happy with them, I start going in with my black acrylic paint to line them. I also added some sketched eyebrows already here, which I for some reason did not record. I'm sorry. If I didn't know how difficult it is to draw these lines with a brush, I would think this looks effortless, but believe me, it's not that easy. I then also take some brown acrylic paint and add some lines to the eyebrows to give them more dimension. 
And then to blend it in with the face a bit more, I used some brown pastels to add a bit of shadows to the eyebrows and also the corners of the mouth and the eye lines to make them look less harsh. Awesome! I then also decided to give him some freckles with some dark brown gouache paint. Okay, the freckles were such a good idea, oh my god! Now there is just some gloss on the lower lash line and a thin gloss layer on his lips missing and the face up is already done. Let's make him some eyes as well. I use the fourth biggest half sphere on my mold and first pour in some UV resin before sprinkling a little holo glitter on top of it. I spread the glitter with a toothpick and then add these cut out designs that I made and printed and will place them upside down on top of the resin. I then cure it for two minutes and then will spread some white UV resin that I mixed on top of it all, filling up the mold a little more. After curing I can demold the eye and it just looks so cute. I then made a second one the same way and just have to insert them into Purin's head now. And there he is and he's just the sweetest little boy, oh my god. And with that we have everything together for the doll. Let's see how he looks like. And here's my version of Pom Pom Purin. I hope you love him as much as I do. And if you do, please make sure to watch all of my other Sanrio videos as well. Also, if you like my videos, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also, if you like my videos, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And thank you also to all my patrons. You guys are true heroes. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful, delicious day. Bye!